Hey guys, I, I just went live on the wrong channel. I've got another channel called Train Zombie, and uh, you didn't miss much, I don't guess. It's basically what you're seeing here. Just hanging out with Cruz. It's a hot day. Uh, uh, we've been out hanging out a little bit, but it doesn't like to be out there for a really long time. Uh, it's just me and Cruz and Coco and the, and the cats hanging out. Oh, we're getting some viewers already. So we uh, we got some really cool videos coming up. Uh, one video where we uh, went riding the mountains and side by side and got lost. And I'm pretty sure she got us lost on purpose because <laughs> she wanted to stay out in the mountains and I didn't really feel like it. So I'm pretty sure she got us lost on purpose. And while we were out there being lost, we lost our GoPro and had all kinds of really great footage on it. Uh, so we had to go back looking for the GoPro. I'm not going to ruin it for you whether we found it or not. Maybe that'd be some suspense for you. Uh, Cruz, uh, uh, Sis Bro Gang says, says good morning to you. He said he, he doesn't really have time to respond. He's chewing on his bone. Yeah, yeah, we live in West Virginia, uh, deep, deep in the West Virginia mountains. But uh, for some stroke of luck, we ended up with some really nice high-speed internet. He needs a lot of exercise. Yeah, a lot. I mean, uh, some people exercise them uh, running and jogging. Some people use a bicycle. But in my experience, you know, you just can't get him enough that way. He he really needs more than that. No, nah, there's nothing like a dog. I agree. So we take him out with a side by side in the mountains and we let him run. And honestly, he can run circles around us all day long while we're riding that side by side and just keep on trucking and never get tired. We actually have to make him take a break so he doesn't get heat exhaustion or something like that. Yeah, he lets us know when he's he done. She's, she's the talking back. over there. Hold up. We pointed at you. What? He can jump in the back of the side-by-side -side and get whenever he feels like he needs a break. Yeah, when he feels like he needs a break, he can jump in the back of the side-by-side, -side, but he doesn't. I mean, oh, he's four years old. When's his birthday, honey? Um, September 13th. September 13th is his birthday, and he'll be five. Uh, you're getting a seven-week-old Doberman Ogman. Oh, yeah. So watch my video about getting a new Doberman pup. It has a lot of information on there for you about, about what you need to do. Do you know where I can find a Doberman breeder in Kentucky? Where does... Uh, That's where Cruz came from. Yeah, he actually came from Kentucky. Samson Kennels. Samson Kennels uh, in Kentucky is where he came from. Uh, we have a, a lady that we breed him with uh, ever so often. She's been breeding with another male that she has. Pitbull. Pitbull's a great dog, man. Uh, they get a bad rap, so did Dobermans, but I've seen some really lovable pit bulls. Website and find, um, Mary Gray. Mary Gray? Said so you can get on the pedigree website. Pedigree website, you mean? Not pedigree, AKC oh, the, okay, you can get on the AK, AKC website and find what, honey? Uh, Mary Gray. Samson Mary Gray, Gray, Samson Kennels. How do I introduce him to new guests, people and guests? <sighs> okay, when we first got him, yeah, slowly and carefully, when we first got him, uh, the previous owner had went through a thing of every time a guest would come, they put him in his kennel, and he started to associate guests and people with bad. You know, like uh, I've got guests, I've got people, and that's a bad thing. So um, we tried to stop doing that and carefully introduce him to new people, um, get him used to the idea. The more people, the better. The more he got socialized, the better he got with it. And uh, But, you know, occasionally there's some people he just doesn't like, man. Dogs just... Dogs in general don't like some people. Once we have okay him around people, like some people are okay, I don't know if they can hear you well. He considers there. them a part of the pack. Yeah, one, once we've okayed him and we've got everybody okay, and uh, yeah, he's considered part of the pack and he's okay. You know, so, man, he is tearing this bone up. <laughs> this... Dog fight wounds kind of. So if you watch the dog fight video, you know, let's see if I can get where I can show you. His butt, the hair still hasn't really grown back yet. Uh, he doesn't seem sore or anything. He seems uh, pretty good. He's running like he always ran, doing really good about it. And playing and playful and getting along with the cats. You can see the cat over there eating out of this fish that he's. He ate out of earlier. So. You say hi? Tell my buddy. Say hi. So, everything's doing good. Wait, oh, poor buddy. You got the house, car, and the kids. 
It's all over. Oh. He's making a good. Yeah, he's doing really good. Nah, he doesn't seem bothered. He was a few days, man. He was he was kind of down a few days. I don't know how much of it was physical, how much was it emotional. You know that he got beat up. <laughs> you know, if you get beat up, I guess you carry a little bit of a, you know, an emotional scar for a little while. But now those dogs are put up and everything's good. We're all we're all good on that end of it. So he's just uh, chilling out. Somebody asked me to go, why a Doberman? Well, it, we didn't actually choose to have a Doberman. Uh, a friend of ours could no longer care for him, and and uh, they brought him by and dropped him off and, and asked us if we'd take care of him because they knew we would. We would take good care of him. So, yeah, that's why. Uh, did y'all break it up? <laughs> yeah, watch the video, man. you got to watch that video. Uh, she's, she's chasing him down with a bird feeder. <laughs> He's got a hummingbird feeder with his ears cut. Does he have ear problems during the winter? You know, I've noticed him scratching around on his ears a little bit. I have. I've noticed him rubbed his ears on a carpet a few times. And we have we have some ear stuff to put in. We got medicine. Yeah, we got medicine for his ear stuff. Um, oh, he's No, they're doing the same. But cats, no, they're, they're doing just fine. I mean, he, you know, he'll stomp at them and chase them. He likes them to run from him, but he's never hurt a cat or anything. He... He, uh, he likes them to run away from him. See, there's a kitten, a little baby kitten right behind him, and she's uh, she's bad to pounce on him. You know, right now might, might be a great time with the with the, the bone in his mouth uh, to pounce on him, <laughs> but uh, she does it. So we didn't crop his ears, by the way. The previous owner did, and uh, uh, but I like it. I think he looks great. You know, but uh, if I had to do it again, I'm not sure if I would or not. Do you know the breed of dogs they're mixed? Um. Yeah, Greyhound, uh, German Pinscher. Hey, we're back. Oh, what happened, man? <laughs> the Russians are at it again. <laughs> okay. So I'm back. I don't know what happened. My app crashed or something. Something went on. Um, somebody earlier said they had a had a black cat, and I approved your comment, even though there's a little bit of curse word in there, but it's, it's pretty funny. Our little kitten's a jerk too, man. <laughs> she not a lot of jerks. She loves to play. Check out if the cat cut it. You know, I think she might have. I think one of the cat we've got three cats. There's only two of them that were visible. So one of them might have done the wire cutting. You never know. Dude, are you really gonna tear that thing up that long? Oh hey man, where's your pig? <laughs> hey. I don't know. He's, he's, he's not eat that whole bone. He's not it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it is next to him. It's touching his paw. I don't know how much more next to him. Am I losing signal again? Oh, Doberman. You also have a Doberman and the Doberman. Okay. You see the kitten walking up behind him. He's just chilling. He loves to squeak his pig, but right now he's just so, uh, man, he is, he is tore up about that uh, rawhide toy. So. Oh, look where he knocked down his toys last night. Did he do that? Yes. <laughs> sometimes he has to find the toy that he really wants. <laughs> you know, sometimes he just... He's got to go through them, and he's got to get the toy that he likes. But sometimes he pees on them. I don't know why he does that, but sometimes he pees on them. What does this do with the video if I do that? No, this is more for rotate things. I'd like to go see the chat. Yeah, last night, I didn't know what that noise was. That big old huge bone fell out. I didn't know what he tore up over there. Every one of his toys were dead. I think his movie's blown away from the squeaky toys if he don't. Rope up a tree so he can climb. Yeah, you know, I would like to see him climb a rope up a tree. Do he like new activities? Yeah, he does all kinds of activities. Man, he'll do anything. He's as physical as he can be. He's an athlete. Well, 
We trained him, but, you know, we're not dog trainers or anything like that. I mean, we got him when he was about a year old, and it's just really just talking to him. He was nine months old. And, uh, you know, basically, we just told him to do stuff, and he does it. <laughs> you know, there's not a lot to training that goes on. You know, it's yeah, just... we are definitely amateurs. Yeah. Yeah, so he's just... You know, he's self-taught Doberman, I guess. You know, we, we've taught him some things we do and we don't like, you know. We've acclimated him to people. And right now, he's grounded from the living room. If you can see the, the, the hamper blocking him to go in the living room. And yeah, he can get over the hamper. He can jump over the couch. But he knows he's not allowed to. So he's he's been doing pretty well while we're he down here. He got he got busted for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got caught once, got in trouble. So, um you have an 11-month-old female, would love to breed at least once. Yeah, you know, uh, she takes care of all the breeding, stuff like that. You know, she checks all the papers and all the, the histories and stuff. And you or your girlfriend, I heard Dobermans tend to be closer to one person. Ah, okay, that's a good question. Does, does he like me or her better? Okay, the thing is, I think that he wants to protect her a lot more than me. If you watch the bubble, the thing where we did Doberman Fincher versus Bubbles, he's, uh, man, he's really protecting her from this bubble machine, and he doesn't care if I'm near the bubble machine or not. <laughs> he doesn't really care. But I think he minds me better. I think he sees me in more of an alpha or pack leader better because, you know, sometimes she'll tell him to do something. He won't do it as much. He won't mind as quickly, and, and then I tell him to do it, and he doesn't. I think he sees me as, as not as much of a pushover, more the alpha in the pack. And her is a pushover, but he thinks he has to protect her. What, what about when so. he was a nine-month-old nine puppy and he was pinching me on the butt and I'll take my flip-flop off and then when I went to take my flip-flop back on Oh, the yeah. yeah. Why don't you tell the, the story? Cover up my comments. I'm, I'm, you can tell the story. Cause I'm not good at telling stories. What you're an you excellent storyteller. No, no. Don't I'm lie. Wait, I'll cover up. She wants stories told, but she doesn't... <laughs> She goes around the house without any clothes on. I really do. Sorry. What a tough life I have. Okay. So when he was a pup, like nine months old, I was walking out to the um the No, barn. I've never taken him to work. To the barn. Well, he had this thing of nipping my butt. He would come up, pinch my butt, and run. And it would it would hurt a little bit. I mean, he wasn't biting, but it, like to to grab my clothes, it would pinch my skin. And he had made me so angry. He kept doing it. So I took off my flip-flop. And he would run around in circles on me. I could not catch him. I was so upset. So mad. Because he just kept coming up and, like, zooming in, biting me and running. So I gave up. He kept running. He went and I had my flip-flop. Like, you get out of here. So as I put my flip-flop down and was bent over trying to put it back on my foot, he came back and bit me on the butt. I was so mad. I was so mad. He, he, just, he, he used to do things like that. It was a game to him. He used to pinch. He used to pinch, and we've got him out of that. We've got to get the start of the show back in the video here. So I know that's why. All right. So I'm getting ready to go to work. So is, is that where the nipping started? Have you ever taken? Okay. The nipping, I don't think it's. I don't think it started there. Yeah, he came from another. Uh, he came from a home that had a teenage boy in the house. And I think that when he was smaller and they played those kind of games of, of uh, you know, chase me and catch me and pull me down and that kind of stuff. And, yeah, we've seen videos of him playing pretty rough. And I think it started there when he was a puppy with the previous owner and he was smaller and it wasn't a big deal. And they might have had something to do with why they had to let him go uh, because of that behavior. And so he came with us, he still had that behavior, and we had to teach him not to do that. And we have. He hasn't done it in a very long time. It's been years since he's done it. So. He also had the, like, his attack of bite suit. Yeah. He came from another seminar. Yeah. He did have that, like, somebody's worked with him with a bite suit kind of behavior. He did. How is the swimming training? Well, we haven't been back to the pool. Uh, so, yeah, I think he does have se uh, separation anxiety. I think he does. Uh, he, he, 
I, I'm not gonna call it bad though. He just cries a little bit and stuff. And, and if we leave him and we don't put him in the kennel when we go, he'll pee on something <laughs> as soon as we leave. You know, just kind of tell us. Sometimes it's his toys. When we first got him, he did that back separation and got him. But I think it's where he was basically his first day nurse left him here and never came back. Yeah. But now he knows we always come back. That bear. Yeah, he does look kind of like a bear skin rug. Maybe we should have him made into a rug when he, when he passes away. We could have a cruise rug. No. No. She's having him cremated. And then she's going to sell piece, sell powder of him on the internet, right, honey? No. <laughs> you have a Doberman, too? Uh, man, I can't pronounce that. Somebody, they have a vlog there, too. So maybe we want to check them out. Aruda? Aruda Vlogs? Anthony Figures says no. <laughs> I'm Anthony, on that. Anthony, yeah, she's on you. No bear skin rugs. No Doberman skin rug. I'm good, Richard. How you doing, man? Doing really good. Getting ready to get ready for work here in a minute. I've got to go out and work this evening. Oh, something I'm doing too. I'm I'm recording some videos while I work that I can't show you now. But um, when I retire soon, they'll be up. Check vlog. Checky vlog. Average, they live about 10 years. That's their average. Oh, somebody asking how long they live? Yeah, they can live longer. They live. 10, 11 years. <clears throat> it's not, it doesn't show me all the chats for some reason, I guess. And it won't let me turn my phone the way that I can see the, the good chat. But. I see some of them pop up. I'm looking for a male. I'd love to breed. Yeah, well, I mean, contact her. She's commenting under there. Coco's commenting. Uh, Felix. Um, Carissa is her name. She's she's commenting under there too. Coco J, maybe you guys can get together and talk about breeding him. Uh, so he, he loves it. I mean, we've got a video of him breeding. It's one of his favorite things. He might make it to 15. Y'all have a big yard and always active. With, well, yeah, we also live in the mountains where we take him running a lot. And we get it. He gets if exercise is the key to longevity for a Doberman, he's going to live forever. <laughs> yeah, trips to the vet. Uh, my dog has got cut. What should I do? Well, you know, it depends on how bad the cut is, man. If he's still bleeding, you need to take him to the vet. Antibiotics. Uh, antibiotics. You know, but if it's a bad enough cut, you're going to need stitches to stop the bleeding and stuff like that. But if it's not a really bad cut, you know, some antibiotics and maybe something if the pain is bad, some vet profen, keep flies off of it. Um, you know, try to stop him from licking it, but that's good luck on that. You know. Okay. Listen, I'm getting ready to get off here, guys. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't clicked that little bell, make sure to click the little bell and, and you'll be notified when we go live and, and when we do live.